Yes, there we are. Good. Oh, Facebook and YouTube. My wife is going to be so happy that I remember to pick the mic up. <laughs> so, Ephesians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 3, tonight. Um, we, we had a wrap on Sunday at the church and we were talking uh, about different things, but if somebody brought up a subject and I wanted to kind of continue it some more tonight, I was thinking about it. Um, somebody said, um, can, you, can you be a Catholic and be saved, was the question. And I responded with a statement that I've always heard and kind of stuck with me, that, is that, uh, that you can be a, a Catholic and be saved, but you can't be saved and be a Catholic. And it's kind of very puzzling on the outset, but it, it's simply what I meant by it and what I was taught by it through the years is what we find in the book of Galatians here that we'll look at in a minute is that there are many, many uh, sincere uh, people who will practice Catholicism and they love Jesus and they're saved. God knows their hearts. And when you get saved, you, if you continue in the growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you start to find out that uh, what what is the true gospel? Uh, what is what does the Bible say that the true gospel is? Is there only one gospel? Are there many gospels? Yes, there are many gospels, but there's only one right gospel. There's only one true gospel. So we find this out, and it's in Ephesians two, uh, verse eight. Uh, for you are, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know these verses. We've, we've heard many, many, many messages on them. Uh, but like John 3.16 that we've been looking at, it's, it does us good to, to kind of think of this, because in this, these two verses, we see the method of our salvation, the gospel message, is saved by grace, by unmerited favor, God's grace to us, through faith, through faith, and that not of yourselves. And the word that there, many people have trouble with this in this verse, they say that is referring to the salvation. No, that is referring to the grace. No, that is referring to the faith. Amen. Which one is it? It's the faith. It's not of that, it's not of yourselves, is your faith. I have faith, uh, but my faith doesn't save me. God saves me. Grace saves me. And the faith that I have to believe in that is from God. Amen. It's, it's that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What is the faith? To believe. Remember a few weeks ago we talked about Abraham? Abraham <laughs> believed God and God counted it to him for righteousness. We believe and God counts it to us for salvation in Romans 5 1. Uh, so we believe, what do we believe? What God has done, what God has said. Not that I have this tremendous faith like so many people. Uh, would say, uh, do you, um, are you going to heaven when you die? Well, I have a strong faith. Well, well good for you. Uh, that's good to have. But what does that mean? I have a strong faith. Well, I believe. I, I believe in God. Well, what makes it strong? What would make your faith strong? Stronger than a, a normal faith or stronger than a, a little faith? that the, the lunatic's father had. I, I, I have unbelief, but I, I want to believe too. Uh, I have a little faith. Uh, but I have, some people say I have a strong faith, meaning like they go to church, they read their Bible, they pray. Um, 
And so they, they determined that their faith is strong. They believe in God. If someone says, do you believe in God? They say, yes. Uh, but, but you can turn your faith into a work. And the moment we do that, we turn our faith into a work, then, uh, then we're not saved by grace anymore through faith. It's, we're saved by our faith. We think that our faith has saved us. I have a strong faith. I believe in God, therefore I'm going to heaven when I die. No, because you're saved by grace through faith. And that's not of yourself, it is a gift of God. How do we know this? Philippians 1.29 for, unt, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Many people suffer for Christ and they turn their suffering into a work of salvation. Oh, I'm suffering for God, so therefore God is going to bless me with salvation. So, a person uh, can be uh, sincere and love Jesus and, and be in and, and I don't just want to use Catholicism tonight, it just happened that that was the question. Uh, any religion, you can be sincere and you can love Jesus if you hear about him dying on the cross for your sins. But if you begin to learn the knowledge of the truth, which is the gospel, the knowledge of the truth, what is the truth? That you're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. And it's not of works, lest anyone could boast. So anything to do with a work, even my faith, if I turn my faith into a work, like I believe, I have a strong belief, so therefore I'm going to heaven. No, I'm going to heaven only because of grace. Uh, so if I remain in a system that teaches works as a reward or as a possibility of assuring that you'll get to heaven, if you do this and you do that and you do this, then, you know, when you die, Hopefully you've done enough of this and that and that to get you into heaven. That is a tremendous system of works. And so if I learn that this is what that system is about, because I've gotten saved and I've learned the doctrine of grace, being saved by grace through faith, then it's hard for me to stay in that system. It's very difficult to maintain and believe in a system that promotes works when I know that I'm saved by grace and that it's all by grace. And that the Bible says in Romans that if, it, that if it's, you can't have grace and works, it's either all of grace or it's all of works. And if, the, and if it's all of works, then it isn't of grace at all. And so then, you, then therefore the conclusion is that you cannot be saved by grace and by works. Now I know what it says in James chapter 2 that show me your, your faith without works and I'll show you my works with, with faith. But uh, you know, the faith produces the work. We're, we're not talking about that here, what faith produces. We're talking about what we think uh, and what, what people think in many, many, many different religions uh, that they would call the good news, the gospel, which isn't the gospel at all. There's only one true gospel, and it's this, that we're saved by grace through faith. Why are we saved by grace through faith? Because Christ came and died for our sins when we couldn't. And we just, and God told us that, and we believed it. And that, that's my, my contribution to, to my faith is that I believe what God did. I believe what God said, just like Abraham did. But I didn't have this, this an, uh, enormous amount of belief in that, that God was going to send a Savior to save me and that God was going to do this uh, uh, or that uh, at some point we would all be able to get saved. No, I just heard that God did this and I believed it. And in the, in the faith, of what God was going to do, uh, it, it takes faith to believe that Christ came and died on the cross for our sins because God said it, I believe it. Like the old bumper sticker, God said, I believe it, that settles it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I don't need to prove God, I don't need to question God, 
I don't need to do any of that. I just believe God. God said it. And, and it, it helps a lot. But when I begin to understand this, then I see that, that if I was in a system where they, they, they don't teach that, they teach that you must maintain a good works profile. You must uh, do this and do that. Uh, and then at the end of your life, you hope that you're going to be accepted. It's, it's, it's very much steeped in works. And it's like in Galatians chapter 3, if you turn there, we'll look at it. Um, he starts out in verse 1 saying, O foolish Galatians, O foolish Galatians, we could say, O foolish Catholics, O foolish Baptists, O foolish Lutherans, O foolish Buddhists, O foolish Islamists, O foolish Hindus, O foolish Muslims, who bewitched you? Who has deceived you? Who has tricked you? Uh, that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. The book of Galatians is all about uh, the Judaizers coming back into the church and teaching works uh, as well as grace. Okay, you're saved by grace, but you have to maintain that salvation. You have to still be circumcised. You have to still follow the law. You have to still do this. And they initially heard the grace message and were so excited. I'm saved by grace. This is amazing. I can't earn it. I know this already. And, and yet now you're telling me I'm saved by grace. And Christ died for my sins and I can be saved. And yes, and then the Judah is coming, yes, but... Yes, but. And there's always somebody promoting a but to our grace. And they're saying, no, but. It can't be that it's that simple. Yes, it is. It can't be that you're saying that people just get saved because it's God's unmerited favor and they don't have to do anything. Yes, that's what we're saying tonight. We're saved by His grace. Uh, through faith, and that faith isn't even of us, it's God's gift to us to believe. His demonstration of His power and His love and His work that He has shown us, and we believed it, and that, that's all we've done. And I can't take credit for anything but saying, I just believe what God said He did on the cross, and, 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 that, and I'm saved because of that. But, oh foolish Galatians, Oh foolish whoever it is, we could say it, if in, in this church you have a problem with grace and you say, I still must do things. Or maybe as an individual, you still have this, this th thing inside of you that if I don't do this and this and this, then God is not happy with me. God is upset. Oh foolish whoever you are. Oh foolish Pastor Jim, if I think that way. Oh foolish Oscar, if he thinks that way. Oh foolish Peabodians, if we all think that way. If we all develop this system like what we call today legalism, uh, we find churches that uh, we say, oh, that church is legalistic. What do we mean by that? They're, they put you back under the law after they've told you about grace. Yes, there's grace, but, and this is where Churches begin to teach that you can lose your salvation. Yes, there's grace, but you have to maintain it or you could lose it. No, I can't lose it. It's I'm saved by grace through faith, but, but who bewitches you? Who does that? Who? People who don't know uh, the gospel message and the devil's behind it also. And people who just can't even, um, it's like this. I don't have to understand grace, but I am required to believe in grace. I don't have to understand how God gives me grace, how his unmerited favor works towards me, why he would do that. It's, it's a mystery, but I am obligated 
under the gospel to believe that that's his method of working. I, so God said, I, 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 I saved you by grace, and I say, okay, I believe that. I don't want you to have any other gospel. I don't want you to add to this gospel. I don't want you to take away from it. I don't want any other gospel. And so uh, he goes on to say, This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That this only this is the this is the only thing that Paul had to say to them and that would confirm exactly where they were and where he was. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by doing a work, or did you receive it by the hearing of faith? I, I heard that if I receive Christ, the Holy Spirit will come into me, and he did. Uh, did I do a work for that to happen? No. And then, don't you see these churches today even? They're, they're, they meet together, and they... They think that if they, you know, uh, en energize their emotions to a fervent state, that the Holy Spirit will come upon them. Did you receive the Spirit by doing that work, or was it by the hearing of faith? That we receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith. I, I'm told it, I believe it, it's not of myself, it's a gift of God. This only would I learn from you. How did you get the Holy Spirit? Answer that for yourselves. Answer that, and that, then you'll have the answer to whether you're living according to grace or you're living according to the system of works that many, many religions uh, produce. And so... Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? It's amazing, those verses. And then in, I wanted to read um, Galatians 1. I, I didn't tell you to turn it, but I'll just read it to you. Galatians 1. Uh, this whole book is about this, this subject, so you can bounce back and forth on it, but it's a good read throughout it. Galatians 1 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. <clears throat> but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that that you have received, let him be accursed. But do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Uh, any other gospel, so uh, we, you can look back at this day, you can look at any time period from that day to this day, and we can look around us today, and we can see many other gospels in the world. And any gospel that adds to the gospel of grace, or takes away from it, or adds even a little bit to it, it says, let him be accursed, even if it's preached by an angel. And there are many people who are following a gospel that they believe is started by an angel in this world today. The, the gospel of an angel. And why is it so readily accepted? Because it's an angel. And we all love to hear about angel stories, <laughs> don't we? Oh, so-and-so saw an angel today. What happened? Oh, the angel was bright, and it, it, it was here, and then it was gone. <clears throat> Did he say anything to him? Yes. He told him that if he followed uh, the teaching of angels, that, that he would be in the, the, the orb of light and love and peace all his days. That's another gospel. It sounds good, but it's not the gospel of grace. And it says, if somebody teaches you that, let them be accursed, even an angel. Paul 
is saying this in reference, he uses here uh, himself, an angel, and men. And it was men that he was going after because men were coming into the church at Galatia and they were teaching another gospel. You can have grace, but you still need to fall to obey the law. Oh, but I can't, but you need to. But I can't, but you must try. You, you, if you don't, then what good is grace? You still have to keep the law, or else you're just one of those, you're just like the heathen out there that do whatever they want, because there's grace, 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 grace. And we still have that teaching today. When we start teaching about the pure grace of God, people in the natural mind always will try and pull you into this direction uh, that say, well, what about, well, okay, I understand, but aren't you telling people they can do whatever they want? When did we ever tell people that? Well, you're telling them that there's grace. There's grace. What does that mean? God's on God's favor. Well, what about if they sin? There's grace. What about if they fail? There's grace. But uh, aren't you saying that you, they can get away with it? Uh, don't they have to maintain like a, a measure of good works? Isn't, doesn't God want us to do what is right? Yes, he does, but he knows that we can't. Read Romans chapter 7, Paul's big dilemma. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I'm a wretched man. And, and, I'm, and so when, when you say, that, and when you can call yourself a wretched man, you're not looking to use grace as a license to sin. No, I, I've never really met anybody that uses grace as a license to sin. That says, wow, there's grace, I can sin. They don't understand grace at all then. That's not the gospel of grace. The gospel of grace has saved me from my sins not giving me an excuse to do them, but save me from them. And I realize this, and it, it, it's something that breaks you and overwhelms you. And grace becomes very precious. Like, how, how do I, how did I get this? How, why would you give this to me, God? I don't know, but he did. And then he wants me to live by this grace, that this is the only gospel. So we have these good intention people in these different religions and they're saved because they love Jesus but then when they learn about grace it, it, it's a tough decision sometimes but you have to come to a place where you go I can't listen to the I can't add to this gospel I can't live in two gospels I cannot live by grace and also try and keep the law it doesn't mesh it's like oil and, and water it's, it doesn't go uh, and then if I live by grace then I fulfill the law and the law will be kept through me through that grace and it's not a striving thing or a performance thing it's just what the Holy Spirit does through me uh, by faith it's it's through grace so so if there's anybody that's teaching and we talked about this on Sunday like who is responsible for the false doctrine the person who's sitting in ignorance in the church or the person who's teaching it. The person who's teaching it is held responsible, but if the person who's hearing it uh, learns that there is only one pure gospel and they continue in it, then they become responsible too. And that's why we say it's hard to be, you can be uh, in a religion and we use Catholicism there, but we're not picking on Catholicism tonight, we're just talking about picking on religion. Uh, people, men's concepts of, 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 of what God is like instead of going to God and finding out directly. But uh, so you could be in a religion and be saved, but you can't stay in a religion that's promoting works and continue in that in, in that salvation. You will you will have to come to a place like where you just say, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> so you end up leaving. And, or, and finding a, a church that believes in the grace of God. No other, not going to add anything else to it. And then when you read these verses, you say, if anybody, an angel or a man or a teacher of the law or somebody wearing robes or this or that, teaches any other gospel to you than this gospel of grace, you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If anybody in this world <clears throat> teaches that, as, as nice as they might be, and as 
uh, homey, homey, gobby, gobby, as uh, they might be doing all these things, is, is you know, uh, um, over, uh, powerful as their speech might be, if they're teaching something that it adds to this gospel of grace, let them be accursed, is what Paul is saying. And what we have to be careful of is, is um, how we relate to people in, in, with different belief systems. Like if you come across somebody and you know they're in a legalistic church, what is what can we do there? What do we do? Are we supposed to slam them over the head and say, no, you, 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 it's another gospel, you're going to be a curse, so you got to get out of there. Or do we love them and just reveal grace to them and then we, we, we gently teach them, uh, this is the gospel of grace. Let me show you what it says in Ephesians 2.8. This is what I've come to learn. I'm not going to slam somebody over the head and say, you're wrong, I'm right, blah, blah, blah. You know, because you're going to start saying like, oh, my church is the only way. No. Uh, but it, you can learn what somebody believes and then when if you see that they're being led astray by another gospel, then you bring them to the truth. Right? I'll bring them to me. Uh, I bring them to the truth. Hey, let's let's look at the Bible. Let's let's open up to Ephesians two. What is it? What do you think this means? Uh, we're great. We're saved by grace through faith. What do you think it means in in Galatians one when it says that if we hear if any if anyone adds to the end of the gospel, or, or let's read Revelation at the end in in chapter. Uh, 21 where uh, it says that no man can add to the words of this book or take away they will be cursed and they will be taken away you cannot do that so we strictly go by the word of God and we have this gospel but aren't there many gospels yes but there's only one true gospel there are many people many organizations many religions touting a gospel tonight. Hey, come to my church. We, we, have, a, we have a message that we're teaching about uh, social uh, reform and we're teaching people how to respect each other and, and teaching people how to love themselves. And are you teaching the gospel of grace? Well, no, no. Uh, but we're teaching really nice things. Well, I, I, I don't, I can't, I don't, I know, no, thank you. Uh, I, I believe in the gospel of grace. Mm -hmm. It's the only true gospel that there is. And all those other things can, can flow from the gospel of grace. Mm -hmm. But I need to stay uh, under the gospel of grace. I, I, don't, I can't hear another gospel. It is, it, and what Paul actually said here is it's really not another gospel. But people are calling it another gospel. And I was like, I was in Barnes and Nobles a few weeks ago, and I was amazed at how many books are promoting another gospel. It's amazing. Like you would think, oh, let's go to the Christian section, which they don't call it the Christian section; they call it religion. Uh, <clears throat> so you go to the religion sections, and you can find books on on Satanism, on the occult, even on atheism. You know what they're calling atheism now? Um, the the alternate religion and in, and in a sense they're calling it another gospel. Uh, to believe in nothing is is a, their good news. They're not accountable to any higher power or any god that's out there because there isn't anything. It's just us, and we can do whatever we want because it's just us. We we live. This is our life, and then we're going to die. And it's it's great to be an atheist. Uh, or an agnostic, or the, so, but you can just go down the rows and see that it goes from, and yes, there's books there, uh, Christian books, and they're great, but there's also books on um, the occult, there's books on this belief system, on that belief system, on, you know, uh, the abundant life system, uh, which is another gospel, by the way, the gospel that promotes 
uh, prosperity, prosperity, and sowing seeds, and this and that, is another gospel. It's not the gospel of grace. It's another gospel. And so, uh, when we say that people are in these systems, uh, we should pray for them because they're being led astray by another gospel. It sounds good, it might even seem good, but it's not the gospel of grace. And so, uh, we, we um, have to guard our own hearts against adding anything to the gospel of grace. Because I realize this, that I have the, the capacity inside of me because I, I can, I can um, uh, go from the mind of Christ and thinking with God into thinking natural thinking because that which comes first to man is natural and I can end, enter into natural thinking and in that natural thinking uh, my mind can, can uh, lead me down a path of believing in the gospel but adding something to it or t taking something away from it and it ceases to be the gospel of grace uh, being saved by grace through faith because if I really believe this verse tonight uh, then I would never enter into uh, the thinking that I need to do more as a believer should I be doing more I need to do more I'm not doing enough. God is not happy with me. You're saved by grace through faith. You're like everything that God could possibly give to you, He has already given to you. And you just have to enter into it. Joy, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Right? Peace, I give you my peace. Not as the world gives it, but I give you my peace. And none of those verses and we could go on and on, love, uh, none of them have a clause at the end of it. If you live right, if you do good, if you adhere to all I'm saying, if you do, no ifs, it's like I have given you this. Read Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 1, if I'm, I'm going to see, I'm going to remember right, 18 things are given to us in the past tense in that chapter. Positional truth. 18 things God has already given to us. Done deal. Including being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, including being uh, accepted in the Beloved. Including being predestinated according to the adoption of the sons. Including all of those things. Uh, and go to Romans 8 and nothing can separate us from the love of God. Um, no conditions. If you do this, nothing can separate it. If you do that, nothing can separate it. If you follow the law, nothing can do. No. It's, this is what God gives you. This is the gospel of grace. And when I live in the gospel of grace, um, then it starts to produce the fruit of the gospel of grace uh, in my life, in my words, in my thinking, in my behavior. And it flows out of me the gospel of grace, so that I begin to do the things that the other gospels are telling me that I should be doing as well as having grace, but I just begin to do them out of, a, out of an abundance of grace that flows in my heart and through my heart because of what God has done for me already. And so it produces the fruit of the Spirit in my life, and it's never a striving thing, it's just that I want to do it. It's like we always talk about, like a, the, what we love about our church is that people want to come to church. They don't feel like, I have to go to church. If I don't go to church, and you know, God's not going to be happy with me. I'm not going to be blessed, blah, blah, all this stuff. No. No, I, I want to go to church because I love God. I love God. And I want to hear His Word. And I want to be blessed by the Word. And I know I'll be built up if I go. And, but if I don't go, I'm not going to look for an anvil. I'm not going to look for, you know, my, my, my life going all awry because I didn't go to church. That's another gospel. That's another gospel. How about um, your faith? Uh, well, if you had enough faith, uh, we know that Jesus said this, but like, as like people have said this to me before, maybe to you, like, well, you know, 
your, your child would be better if you had enough faith. Your life would be better if you had enough faith. Uh, what is that? It's another gospel. Should we have faith? Yes. But can I put a condition on my life being better or not because I don't have enough faith? Uh, Jesus, like, go back to the lunatic's father. Lord, if you can do anything, help my son. If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe it. Oh, I do believe. I do, but help my unbelief. That's it. What did Jesus do? He healed his son. He said, oh, no, no, come back when you have more belief then. Come back when you've added to your faith the virtue and the patience and all this. No, we add those things to us as a result of the grace of the, the gospel of grace already inside of us. That's, that's the difference. And so, uh, be careful of people who say to you or, or uh, that, you know, well, this and this could happen if you could believe more. And you go, oh, that, that, yeah, it sounds good. That, I mean, how do I believe more? Well, you just believe more. You just say, I'm just believing more. Well, what does that mean? How do I believe more in God? How do we believe more in God? A demonstration of faith. Uh, in Hebrews 11, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And when you break that down, the evidence of things not seen is a demonstration of unseen things. Faith is this, my, my confidence, not things I'm wishing for, but things I'm having confidence in. I believe that God's going to do this because He has demonstrated to me already a thing that has not been seen. And God has shown me in, in my walk that He is faithful. He is faithful. And, and faithful is He who calls you. He will also do it. And He has done it time and time again. So my faith in God is increased because God has demonstrated His faithfulness to me over and over and over again. And I see there again, it has nothing to do with me. I just see what God has done and I say, yes, I, I believe, I believe in Him. Like, <clears throat> isn't it amazing how the disciples uh, saw the 5,000 being fed, and then uh, a couple of, couple of chapters later, they tell Jesus, send the crowd away. <laughs> they, there's no food for them. It's like, you feed them. They're like, oh, like we did two days ago? Like we did, <laughs> I said, yes, exactly, no. That was, a, that was a one time miracle, that could never happen again. Why? It was a demonstration of an unseen thing, but they saw it. They saw something that didn't make sense to them at all, and their faith should have been increased and over the demonstration, but it was not. But it did get that way after a while because they saw miracle after miracle after miracle, and then it says in Acts, they remembered, or at the end of the gospel, they remembered what Jesus did. And so uh, we, we're faced with um, things in our life and we say, well, what makes you think God's going to do something? Because He has before. Because I love when Pastor Max says, it's like He's gotten us this far. You know, we're, we're past the halfway point. Uh, you know, if He's gotten us this far, He took care of us all this time, do we not think He's going to continue to take care of us? Yes, we do, based on His faithfulness to us through the years. And so my faith is increased based on His faithfulness. It's not of myself, it is a gift of God. So, the Gospel of Grace is what we want to encourage people to follow. And if you find people in the religion and they say they love Jesus and all that, just try and point them to the Gospel of Grace though. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gospel of Grace. And people find it and they get set free from the legalistic system of the, that men put on people so easily. And maybe sometimes we put it on ourselves. And we need to be free from that mm -hmm. uh, through the gospel of grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> okay, so if you're watching and you've never had a chance to receive Christ, uh, we want to encourage you to do that always. 
uh, an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into your heart by faith. Uh, you're saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God. You say, do you want to be saved? Do you want to go to heaven when you die? Do you want to have Christ in your heart? Yes. How do I do it? Say a prayer. That simple. Lord, I, I want to have you in my heart. I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. I know I, 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 I'm a sinner. Thank you for dying for my sins. You say you died for my sins. I believe it. Uh, Save me. That's it's really that simple. And and God knows your heart and if you're sincere in that heart prayer, you can't flop them, but like if you're sincere and you really want to know when to go to heaven, then you just invite them in. And there's nothing else to it because it, it would be a work if we added anything to that. It would be a work and we're saved by grace. A simple prayer. And you, you get saved forever. It's amazing, amazing the love of God the grace of God. I was saved because I said a simple prayer. I didn't know anything. Didn't do anything. I just wanted to go to heaven. I wanted to know God. And uh, heard about His love and received it. And I got saved. And the same thing can happen to you. Say that prayer and receive Christ and get saved. And Father, we thank you so much for the gospel of grace. That we're saved by that grace. And uh, it's not of any work that we could ever do. Lord, oh, we boast about it. We'd be so proud in it. But it was not of our works, Lord. But you saved us anyway. Even while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And gave us the opportunity to be saved. I'm grateful for that, Lord. Thank you. Praise you. Love you. In Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.